Hey guys, it's Victoria. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a, another Glowforge video. Today is going to be a basic breakdown on how to use a Glowforge. So this video is going to contain three tutorials. The first one is going to be how to create and vectorize a design to print on your Glowforge. The second tutorial is going to be how to take that design and put it into the Glowforge software and then print it. And then the third tutorial is I'm just going to show you how to draw something like on a piece of paper and put it straight into your Glowforge for engraving. Before we get started, I think it's important to understand what the Glowforge can do. It can cut, which means the laser moves slowly along a path at full power to cut through the material. It can score, which means the laser moves at a lower power to draw a line that doesn't cut all the way through the material. And it can engrave, which means the laser moves quickly back and forth to create an image on the surface. I create my artwork on the iPad Pro and I use the app called Procreate, which is only $10. But of course you don't need to be that fancy, you can just use a paper and pencil and then either take a picture of your drawing and send it to your computer or just use a scanner and then scan it and bring it up on your computer. Now I'm on my iPad with the Procreate app open. The first step is to create a sketch of your design, and as you can see, I already have a sketch of the bus drawn out. And the next thing you want to do is create a layer on top of this to draw all of the lines that you want the Glowforge to cut. Go to the top where you see the layers right here, and then click on that, and then click on the plus sign. And then you can rename that layer to cut. And then just click anywhere to close out the layer palette. And now with the brush selected, you're going to want to draw all the lines that you want the Glowforge to cut. As you can see, when I first draw a line, it doesn't look straight, but then when I hold down with the pen, it actually straightens out the line. Now I'm going to create a new layer for the wheels because the bottom half of the wheels are actually going to be cut out while the top half are going to be scored. And you can use the same technique when drawing a circle. When you keep the pen held down to the surface of the iPad, it'll kind of make it look better. Once I'm done with the wheel on the left, I'm going to copy and paste it and move it over to the right to make sure the wheels are the same shape and size. Click on the selection tool at the top left here and then copy it and to do that you can just brush three fingers across the screen and then hit copy and then brush three fingers against the screen again and hit paste. Now I'm just going to move that over to the other side. Now I just need to cut away the parts of the wheels that are actually going to be scored. So I'm going to go up here to the top left and then grab that little marquee tool. So now I just want the top portion of this right wheel to be scored. So what I'm going to do is select that marquee tool again and then drag around where I want it to be scored. And then swiping three fingers, I'm cutting. And then swiping three fingers again, and then pasting. And I'm actually going to change this part of the wheel to blue because that's going to be scored. To change the color, just go to the top right and then click on the little color icon. And then click on blue. And then click and drag. I'm going to rename this layer score. And now I'm just going to stay on this same layer and I'm going to outline all of the lines that I want the Glowforge to score.
I like to do a lot of copying and pasting when I'm drawing to make sure I have a lot of the same angles. Now I'm going in and fixing any lines that aren't straight and any other imperfections that I see. Okay, I fixed everything that I wanted to fix and I am done with the drawing. So if we go back over to the layers panel, you can see there's three layers, the sketch, cut, and score. And we can just hide that sketch layer by clicking on the check mark next to sketch. And then I'm also going to hide the score layer. So we just have the cut layer there and I'm just going to send that over to my computer by clicking on the wrench icon in the top left corner. And then with share selected, select PNG. So now we can hide the cut layer by clicking on the check mark next to that. And then next to score, turn that on by clicking the check mark. And we just want to send over this layer by clicking on the wrench again, and then PNG. After that, I just open it up in Adobe Illustrator for vectorizing. I am now on my computer opening up Adobe Illustrator. All right, so now I'm going to go to File, and then Place. I'm just going to locate those two PNGs that I just sent over, and hold down Shift to select both of them, and then click on Place. Click anywhere in the document, to place those, so you're gonna have to click twice. Just zooming out so I can see both of those. I'm just dragging this one over. And then I'm clicking, dragging to select both of them. Drag those in, holding down Shift to make them small enough to fit on my artboard. Click on Command-0 to recenter my artboard. First, I'm gonna start with the cut lines. So just click on this first image right here and then go to Window, and then Image Trace. Now just click on this advanced arrow right here to see the rest of the settings. And for Mode, you're just going to want to change that to Color. And then I'm just going to leave all of these settings the same. We have Color at 30, Paths at 50%, Corners at 75%, and Noise at 25 pixels. And then just click on the Trace button down here at the bottom. Once that's done, I'm just going to drag it off the artboard. And as you can see, there is still this white background behind it. So just click back onto that image and then go to Object, Image Trace, Expand. Okay, as you can see, there is still this white background behind it. So what we want to do is click on the Direct Select tool, which is at the toolbar over here below the Selection tool. Or you can also click A for the key command. And then just select all the white spots and delete them. Drag this back onto the artboard. And I'm going to do the same thing with the score lines. So just clicking on this image, just go over here to the image trace. And then for the mode, click color. And then click on trace. And now doing the same thing, just drag this off of the artboard. And then go up to object, image trace, and expand. All right, once that is done, we just want to use that direct selection again. So that is A on the keyboard. And then just click all of the white areas and delete them. Okay, now just drag this back onto the artboard and then place it on top of the bus. Once that looks good with my selection tool, I'm going to highlight and click on everything and then go to object group. So then our bus is all grouped together. Now since these are earrings, I want to do one facing one way and the other facing the other way. So I'm just going to copy and paste the bus. Go up to Object, and then Transform, and then Reflect. And then with Vertical selected, I'm going to click OK. Now I want to make these earrings 15 millimeters wide, so I'm just going to click and select both earrings. Go up to Window and Transform. And then I'm just going to resize these. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to watch the width over here. And when it gets to 15 millimeters, I'm going to stop. 
Okay, now that these are the size that I want them, I can actually resize this artboard because I don't need all this white space around them. So to do that, I'm gonna go over here to the tools and then click on artboard tool. And the key command for this is shift O. And then I am just resizing the artboard. Okay, now this file is ready to be uploaded into the Glowforge design software. So I'm just gonna go up to file and then save as, save this as a PDF. And then I'm just gonna keep all my PDF settings the same and I'm gonna click save PDF. Okay, and it is now ready to be uploaded into the design software. When you're done vectorizing your artwork, you're gonna to wanna to save it as either a PDF or an SVG. And then you just wanna turn on your Glowforge. There's just a little switch on the back to turn it on. And then make sure you turn the on switch on your filter if you have a filter. And then just put your material that you want to cut your design on in your Glowforge and then make sure you shut the lid all the way. If you're ready to upload your design file, you just have to open the Glowforge design software. And to do that, you just pull up your browser and then go to app.glowforge.com. To create a new file, I'm going to click on the blue create button on the top left and then new blank design. As you can see, the Glowforge has taken a picture of my material that I put in the machine. I'm going to click on the plus sign and then upload. And then I'm just gonna click on that vector file that we just created. When you open a file, it always goes to the top left. So with the hand selected, I can just click and then drag over here. And then you can see where it dropped the file. And now I'm going to click on the arrow and then just click and then drag and then select the file. And then you can drag it over to be on your material and then click off of it. And then I'm just gonna use my hand tool again just to move around. And also a shortcut for that is to just click on the space bar and then click and drag around. You can also zoom in by using Command Plus or Control Plus if you're on a PC. So I'm just gonna zoom in so I can see those. And then now over here on the left, this is like basically like your layers. And what you want to do is tell the Glowforge what you want it to do with each layer. So I'm going to click on this first layer, which is going to be all the stuff I want the Glowforge to score. So when I click on that, I'm going to click on score up here at the top. And then I already have my settings figured out because I'm actually not using proof grade material. I'm using material I get from inventables.com. So I'm just going to click on my setting for score. And then as you can see, it highlights it in pink. And then now I'm just going to click this bottom layer, which I want the Glowforge to cut. So up here under cut, I'm just going to select my predefined settings, which is small cut. And now I just want to select the material that I want to use. Up here on the right, you just click select material. And then select material again right there. And then because this is not proof grade material, I found that thin maple veneer works best for this wood. So that's what I'm gonna select. Now I am ready for the Glowforge to print. So I'm just gonna go up here to the top right and click on print. The design is gonna take 26 seconds to cut and score. So now I just need to go press the glowing button to start the Glowforge. is to create your design with a black marker. Once you're done with that drawing, you're just gonna put the art in the middle of your Glowforge and then shut the lid. Now that my artwork is inside of the Glowforge, I'm just gonna open up the Glowforge software and then I'm gonna click on create, this blue button right here, and then new blank design. Okay, now we can see the artwork and what it looks like in the Glowforge. 
And the first thing you're going to want to do is click on this blue plus sign and then click on trace. And now you just want to click and then drag around your artwork. And now it's going to allow you to select parts of the design that you want to be cut away. What I'm going to do is select all the white parts of the bee to be cut away. And to do that, I'm just going to click on them. Just click on place artwork up here at the top right. All right, once you're done with that, you're just going to remove the design out of the Glowforge and replace it with the material that you're going to be engraving on. As you can see, I still have the Glowforge software open and the image has just refreshed to show what I have inside of the Glowforge, which is this clear acrylic. And the first thing I'm going to do is click on this plus sign to upload a circle that I created. Click and then drag this circle onto the acrylic drag around the B artwork and then I'm just going to resize that to fit onto this circle. And you don't have to hold down shift or anything, it automatically keeps the proportions. And now I'm going to go up here to select material. And then I'm going to click on medium clear acrylic. Okay, and it looks like the layers are automatically doing what I want them to do. So this circle is going to be cut out. Once you're happy with how the drawing looks in the design software, you're just going to click print and then hit that glowing Glowforge button, which is so satisfying. my referral link in this description and when you use that link you'll get anywhere from 250 to 500 dollars off depending on which Glowforge model you get and then I'll also get paid that amount too. And that's all I have for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did please consider subscribing and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!